Hey, what's up everyone? This is Peter Anun, and today we're just going to go over the AI perception in EQS system. More of a continuance from uh, last week, but uh, recently Miyazoku and I believe Ian were uh, on the share, I'm probably saying his name wrong, but we're on the, the stream, and they share some amazing tips with us. And so I just wanted to quickly go over those and some of the small changes I've done because of those, uh, because of that information. And so uh, let's go to our AI doll controller, and we're going to remove uh, the register perception stimuli source because we no longer need that. Uh, and 4.8 preview two, we're just going to run our behavioral tree alone, right? Um, and this information to still be the same. I'm gonna have the site config uh, set up. Uh, minus 512, 350 is different, and so I, I updated these values. Um, and the rest is still the same. Now I have my on perception updated uh, event out here, and it's on a for loop, so that each time it receives the new scene actors for that tick or uh, whatever. Uh, we want to get our AI controller, right, and then get our blackboard and check if our mailman hasn't been set. And if it hasn't been set, then we want to say mailman has been found, because that is the event that we have assigned and our um, behavioral tree um, service, right? So if you want to BTS mailman radar you would see that we still have that uh, tree set up from before and we have this event that actually is waiting on that uh, call. That was the changes I made there. Now if you want to go to the player controller there's also a new perception uh, component that you can add to the player or actually any actor that you want to auto register as a perception system sense stimuli source. Tongue twister and this basically is saying um, if you have uh, an actor such as our player and you want them to be uh, registered as uh, a, a source that can be seen so if you want the AI to see this player controller you want to make sure that they're, they have a source uh, set up for sight so they can be a source for uh, a site simuli, right? And uh, if you want to add in other sources um, that you want to affect, like herring, for example, you can do that as well, right? So uh, let's delete those and re add this. And so now that's what you do for the player. You have the AI perception stimuli source. Um, and then we just have the AI perception component because this is a listener but also a, a source as well. At least I believe so. I believe it's a source as well. And so those are the changes I made there. Now, there are some additional changes that are now allow you to actually debug your AI correctly, right? So you can visualize the information that is being processed that's very uh, very amazing right let's hit simulate now you can see I have everything already set up and you can see the perception component working and it's great now you're probably asking how do I do this for myself now let's stop this if you go under edit editor preferences and we go to gameplay debugger there's a few different uh, options you can set up in here. Now uh, I don't believe it's necessary that you have to uh, enable these immediately because you, you should be able to get access to them in game without having to do this but this is one of the first things I've done so I'm just going to tell you them anyway just in case. So behavior tree I have ticked, perception I have ticked as well. All right. Now under here you also want to go to show and you have to turn on a developer flag so that you can see your AI debug information. Now there's two ways to show it. One you've already seen, which is stimulate, uh, simulate, 
and you can see it uh, as a simulating. Now you can also go in game and see it as well, which is amazing, right? So now when you're in game, you just hit the apostrophe or uh, quotes, whatever, just hit the key left of enter. And now you can visualize that same information in game, right? And what's really cool is that you can actually navigate through this information while you're in game. It's just, it's just bananas. The features are just bananas, all right? So what you want to do now is you see at the top left, there's a few different options here. So there's zero, one, two, three, and four. For nav mesh, basic information, behavioral tree EQS, which is, which is the environment query system, and uh, perception, right? AI perception tool. And you can navigate through these using your numpad as it says. And you can toggle these menus uh, on and off. And there's also this other little function called the camera, right? You're pretty used to that. You just press tab and you're in your camera now. That's amazing. Now I can look at him and ask myself, why is he still sitting here? Without actually having to navigate there uh, with the character just in case I didn't want to be seen. So, um, what you want to do now is go to your numpad and you can enable and disable these individual options by pressing the number that correlates with the, with the menu option. So right, we press zero for nav mesh, right? We can see the nav mesh. We press one, now we can see the controller name, the pawn name, and all that other basic information that's more related to the pawn itself. Um, now you can press 1 again, disable that, press 2, and we see the behavioral tree now, and we see the, the sequence of tasks that are being executed and where it finishes, right? Which is 8. So now you can see exactly where in your tree hierarchy that is actually stuck at if for whatever reason it's stuck, right? Like this guy is. And, I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with him. We're gonna continue. So you press two, you press three again. And now you can see EQS. EQS is now being fired as we speak. Now, if you press tab, um, or actually if you press plus, the plus sign, you can see right here it says, use plus to switch between chorus. So by default, it's using dog home. So that's probably why it's not doing anything. It should be using wonder. But if we press plus, go back in game, press plus, now it's going to use a different quarry and actually run off that quarry in a second here. Let me press three so I can disable that. And it should start to use uh, the other wandering quarry uh, that I had created earlier. Now I can press three again and I press plus again and it'll flip to the other quarry. So you can actually change the quarries that are available for your AI in real time, right? So now if we go to four now, we can see the perception component and its range of view. So you can see the loose site, the pink correlates with the pink out here and that's the furthest circle or the furthest it can see in the site after it's already gained sight of you. And lost site is, uh, well means sight, this is first green circle, right? As we stated. So if I go right here, he's gonna see me, I'm gonna run away. He can still keep track of me because I'm still within his sight, but not his immediate sight. Now, if we go to three, press three. Do four. Do plus plus see if the dog wonders three off and now we can see that the dog's actually wondering and that's what I mean you can actually change the quarries in real time so we can press three again and we can see that it's it's going through these and just selecting a new location and randomly moving in between them you see it says winner right there Moves there. And I'm in the dig bug camera. I'm not, this is great, right? So those are some of the small changes I've seen 
just within that video. And so I've, I hope these small little details help you because they've helped me um, a lot. And once I've come over some more details and interesting information, guys, I'll definitely be uh, quick to share it with you. Thank you guys for joining me for another AI video. Alright guys, peace.